My name is Kimia Nawabi, and I'm from Durham, North Carolina. I think when people first meet me, they think I don't have a care in the world and I'm super bubbly and happy-go-lucky. But I do have a very dark interior. I love that being an artist brings you places like this. I mean, if I was a dentist, do they have opportunities like this? I don't know. Hi. How are you? My it's... name's The Suck Lord. You say The Suck Lord. The Suck Lord. The Suck Lord. Yes. Okay. The name Suck Lord comes from the suckiness, which is my self-deprecating misanthropic side, and then the Lord, which is my megalomaniacal self-aggrandizing side together in one word. I take bits and pieces of other toys, switch the parts around, sculpt pieces, thereby infusing it with an original meaning, and I make my living doing it. It's kind of like an Andy Warhol thing. It's like he had soup cans and I had stormtroopers. How you doing? I'm Dusty. I'm the suck one. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Hello. My name's Dusty Mitchell, and I'm from Mountain View, Arkansas. Check it out. It's a tiny town. I've just been kind of plucked out in the middle of nowhere. You know, I've never been to the Brooklyn Museum until now. Oh, this is so cool. Never seen crayons used this way before. <laughs> I'm an art teacher at a public elementary school, so my work has always had some kind of childhood reference in it. This is yours with the crayons? Yeah, that's fine. You're going to be hard to beat. <laughs> My name is Hugo, I'm 33, and I'm from Paris, France. This is a self-portrait? Yeah. Where's your face? Hugo's piece doesn't do anything for me. I didn't see a portrait there. Very cubist. I do abstract line drawing. It's very, very train of thought. Seeing his self-portrait, I didn't expect, like, tall, dark, and handsome for some reason. He's got the accent, and I can see him in the studio, like, painting nudes. All right, so let's see everyone. How did he pull that off? Hey, everyone. Hello. Hi, I'm Young. Young, everybody's already been talking about your piece, man. Oh, OK. <laughs> What's yeah. going on there? Both of my parents were going through terminal cancers at the time, and my dad actually passed away in November. Um, so this is the last family portrait that I have with my parents. Hey, don't look, Mom. <laughs> I was always a very imaginative, you know, creative kid because I was an only child. So instead of having brothers and sisters to play with, I had my imagination. Hey, Jasmine. Nice to, nice to meet, to meet you. you. I was born on a hippie commune where there was nothing to do other than play outside or make art. I'm committed to being an artist because I don't need to fit into the popular culture. Hey, there's the new girl. What's your name? Hi, I'm Lola. Hi, Lola. My name's the Suck Lord. Hi, Suck Lord. What is this burden you're carrying? It's a sculpture that I made. Is that the idea, that it's burdened for you? I wasn't being that strategic about it. I feel like I'm blushing because, for whatever reason, I find him kind of attractive. I think this girl's vegan. Oh, God, what is that? Uh, Here she comes. We had just come around to your piece. Oh, cool. I make a lot of visceral tableau out of um, dough and jelly. I study the history of anatomical dissection. It looks like she's playing with these gross dead things. And I think she's going to attack me. <laughs> My name's Tooth. Uh, this is my interpreter. He'll be with us. Um, his name is Bill, because obviously I can't hear. My name is Leon Lim. I was born deaf. When I graduated from high school in Malaysia, I got a scholarship. And I think that was the moment when my parents realized that their image of deaf people not being able to do anything was false. So did you install this in this train? I asked the MTA permission, got permission. Oh, you got permission. If not, they'll give you a ticket and you'll get in trouble with the police. I know all about that. I've definitely been caught writing graffiti and have gotten locked up in Chicago. <laughs> what are you doing actually here? Spray painting. Art on the street and art in the gallery is really merging together right now. What are they? They're my old baseball cards. Love it. Another nerd in the mix. <laughs> wow, this is incredible. Yeah. What are these made of? It's all paper. Growing up, I was pretty social, but maybe on the shy side. I guess I was a little bit of a weirdo. I'm really nervous, and I'm just thinking, I don't want to be the one that sucks. I wanted to do something that was kind of like a stop-motion animation, but uh, freeze-framed all together, um, but kind of became like a party banner. Yeah. <laughs> I like the party banner idea. Sarah is very 
very perky and it scares me just a tad. <laughs> to be honest, I'm not this fully confident artist. Right. Like, I'm on this journey and I want to show, you know, the different sides of that. I do a lot of work with video and I always have been a real big fan of kind of f***ing with people to see what they'll do. So you sure you want to do this? Yeah, be on the show. It's a reality show. Basically, it's a portrait of having a debate with myself about whether or not I want to be on a reality show. Which is the guy that's against the reality show? One with the baseball cap. He lost, didn't he? There they are. Hello. Hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to Work of Art, The Next Great Artist. I am China Chow, and this is Simon de Puri. A leading figure in the international art world, chairman and chief auctioneer of Philips de Puri. Hello, everyone. Hello, Hello. Simon. You had a chance now to look at each other's work. Uh, we have sculptors, we have painters, video artists. One of you is a street artist, all taking part in this extraordinary competition. I'm going to be here to help you along, give you advice, and I hope you will all be bold, be brave. Be amazing. <laughs> Simone is esteemed in the art world. He's kind of like this old world European count. I imagine him living in a castle somewhere. I do already know the suck lord. I had the privilege of buying some of his works. I even had the privilege of auctioneering some of his works. I feel a little bit of fear, like, oh, does suck lord have an advantage? How can I sell Simone some of my pieces? Simon will be with you every step of the way until one of you takes home the grand prize of $100,000 furnished by the 2012 Fiat 500 and your own solo show right here at the world-renowned Brooklyn Museum. All right. <laughs> if I get the solo show at the Brooklyn Museum, I would be the happiest person alive. I mean, that's why I'm here. Before we leave, China and I want to take you to the actual home where the winning artist is going to have their solo show. So, come with us. Enjoy the art. Is this like the thrift store art show? It's the weirdest art ever. It's all thrift store art or like paintings made out of knitwear. There's hair on one of the pieces. I'm smelling kitsch. <laughs> uh, just a little. I really don't like the colors. I'm like, oh, it's hideous. I'm so feeling this. Sparkly wizard art. It's not a wizard, it's Gandalf. Oh! And the sword's name is Glamdring, by the way. I love it. I'm not a highbrow kind of guy. I like crappy stuff. And if I had walked into that as a real art show, I would have loved it. Guys, what do you think of the gallery? It's intense. <laughs> It is time for your first challenge. Yes. <laughs> Each of you will choose one of these works and transform it into a piece that's worthy of hanging in the gallery. <laughs> this art reminds me of what you see at a tag sale. So I'm thinking, what am I going to be able to pick that I can work with? It is very important that you keep a recognizable part of the work intact and make it work within your style. You will have until midnight tonight and only one hour tomorrow to finish your work. One artist will win this challenge and one of you will be going home. You have five minutes to select your piece. You guys ready? Yes! Go! Watch out, watch out, watch out! Lord of the Rings is sort of a religious text for me because it encompasses the epic journey that life is. You got my frog. You were standing right next to it. I know, I couldn't choose. <laughs> it's my frog. And I don't really do sculpture, so I was like, what the hell am I going to do with this thing? What attracts me to the wooden carving is uh, the detail in the composition. It's the art that I think fits the best my style. I'm feeling really indecisive. My brain hurts a little and it just feels impossible to choose one thing. You have one minute until you have to make your choice. Kath 
girlfriend picked the most hideous thing in the room. I don't know what anybody could do with that. Okay, artists, that's time. You guys have made some interesting choices. I will see you tomorrow at the gallery. Bye, thank you. Artists, let's head to your studios and get to work. I'm excited to see our studio, but I'm also nervous because that means the clock is ticking and I have a hundred things racing through my head. The studio space is awesome. As a street artist, I spend most of my time working in abandoned buildings, rooftops, train tracks, and jail. So this is amazing. Now I know what I'm doing. I would, I'm going to sit in the same spot all day. And then we have to take a piece of schlock art and transform it into something that has your own style within it. We have until midnight tonight and one hour tomorrow to finish our pieces. I'm feeling pretty good right now, but the casting part will probably freak me out. My initial idea is to take this sculpture and use her body language and convey there is this little creature that's being protected by another creature. I'm a painter, and my paintings are a combination of narrative, perverse sexual undertones, and psychological portraits. My piece is a sculpture, and it's of a woman who looks like she's in a lot of pain. When I was in high school, I really struggled with bulimia, so I decide to make the woman into an object of consumption. You teach elementary? Yep. What's your favorite project with them? We do like some paper mache pieces that are pretty cool. I choose the portrait of the clown. Totally uninspired, bad motel art. It's playful and creepy. I want to show the difference between those two polar opposites. So now I have a zebra striped cat. Being an installation artist, my goal in my artwork is to change people's everyday experiences. The one thing that's going to put me above the rest of the competition is my flexible thinking. My plan is to camouflage the cat and slice this cat apart so that the viewer can look at the object in a new way. This past fall, my boyfriend and I were the victims of a hit and run accident. Up until two months ago, I couldn't walk. I like the shape of the totem, and since the accident, I'm always thinking about death, and the idea pops in my head to make it a grave marker. I have this cheesy three-dimensional painting, and it kind of made me think of Scarlett O'Hara. The one thing I know is that I want to deconstruct the image and play with something that deals with identity and race. Well, I applied secretly to school, didn't tell my mom. And then was like, Your mom, like, not cool about the art thing or what? She's okay with it, but she would probably rather I be a lawyer. I moved a lot when I was growing up because my mom is a gypsy who can't stay in one place for very long. Okay. I think that moving all the time affects me as an artist because my process is rarely smooth and I have no idea what I want to make at this point. Looking around at everyone else seeming so focused, it's messing with my head a little bit. What are you thinking? It's earthy. Yeah, definitely. And I wanted to transform it to heavenly. <sighs> I'm really into transformative work, and this little dough sculpture made me think of a big wreath made of white paper flowers. I do like to compete because I think it makes me better as an artist. It's more like the piece that I selected is a little old man looking over his shoulder with birds and cages, and I immediately connect the little character with Lola. And then you're looking back like you're like you're mischievous. Lola is this sprightly sex pot, and she just looks like somebody who might sneak around stealing birds and then setting them free. Sweet, I think we got it. Thank you so much. Okay. We become as terrible as the Dark Lord himself. Do not tempt me. Suck Lord is obviously kind of weird, and I think he's going to be an interesting person to know. Go back to the shadow. 
flame of Udun, you cannot pass. I have to take this picture of Gandalf and make it better, which is going to be kind of difficult because I think the painting is already perfect. I'm going to make like an action figure diorama out of this thing. I'm a little concerned about how long it's going to take. My reference piece is a wooden carving of a branch with two birds. My style is freehand line art. I don't sketch and I just let my mind guide my hand. I'm using this technique along with layers, secret codes and messages to create something beautiful in a very abstract way. It looks like Mayan drawings. Yeah, there's a lot more detail that goes into it. He's doing this Keith Haring graphic thing. It's not very original. So he's going to really have to break out of that if he's going to last in this competition. How you doing over there, Mr. Two? Uh, making a little ceramic mold. I wanted to build this narrative where this frog made clones of himself. It doesn't work. In the process of that, things got messed up. There was this Franken frog that was born. I may be able to make this guy light up. Perfect. I actually like that. It's all Frankenstein together. I'm going to take apart the original piece and use it to make a sculpture that resembles the inside of a human body and then photograph it. Are you going to be in it? Yeah, I think so. When I looked at this weird painting of these dogs, they're doing this social thing, they're playing a game. That inspired me to make an installation. It's going to be performative and it's going to invite people to interact with me. I think it'll make me stand out from the competition. Making sure it fits over my face. 